and that was PJ Morton featuring BJ and the Chicago Kid and the Hamiltons. Everything's gonna be all right from his latest project entitled Gumbo. And I believe we have on the air on the Artist Stage Radio Show PJ Morton. Yes, yes, I'm here. How you doing? Good. How are you doing? Well, thank you, PJ, for calling in and being live on the Artist Stage Radio Show. I'm Tracy Williamson. I'm so glad to meet you via the show. My pleasure. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Well, I know you are super, super busy. You're like one of the most busiest artists. you always on tour. But we're going to take this time to chat with you because on the Artist Stage Radio Show, we have... Thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands, I'm going to keep saying thousands and thousands, of singers, songwriters, okay. producers, artists who listen to the show and they watch it live on Facebook who want to be a part of the music industry. And also tonight, I'm sure we have several independent artists who are listening um, because you're on the show and you have a, a major story when it comes to being signed to a label, being an indie artist, amongst so many other things. But right here on the show, PJ, we help artists become better just through uh, tips, information, and artists such as yourself who chat with myself and the artists along with playing your great music. So what are you doing right now? I know that's a random question, but like right now while you're talking to me, what are you doing? Um, right now I'm <laughs> sitting at a table. I was working on the uh I was scoring I was scoring a TV show right now and I, I took a break to to call you. So I'm sitting in front of my computer and uh and my keyboard. So you say you're scoring yeah. for a TV a, t a TV show? Yeah, I'm the cre I'm creating the music for uh for this uh comedy that's coming out in a, in a couple months. Wow, are you able to say the name of the show or is that not is it not I don't yeah, I don't think I'm able to say it yet cuz nothing has come out yet. So um but uh it's exciting. I can say that and uh it's a very funny show mm -hmm. and um it's my first full TV show that I've that I've scored. I've done commercials before and music here and there for movies and stuff but this is like my first time uh doing a whole tv show so it's exciting for me wow so from being a musician songwriter artist and author as well uh movie mm -hmm. score and television score what what is it that you can't do can you cook as well pj i could cook a little bit yeah i'm from new orleans you know so we um we 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 can't uh we can't get out the house without being able to cook a little bit. So I got a uh, I, I got some skills. I'm really I'm really nice on the on the grill too. On the uh, grill, <laughs> but but my yeah. the real question I have for you is: Can you make gumbo? I cannot make gumbo. Oh, I've been PJ. telling myself that I was going to uh, that I was going to learn this year. Um, I've always ha I've always had somebody cook it for me, mm -hmm. and. Um, it's very simple, but you gotta. It, it it it's still complicated in its simplicity. So it's hard to get gumbo right, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I haven't tried it yet. yet. Uh, but I said this year I was gonna learn how to make gumbo. Now, of course, you know this is a nice segue into your project entitled Gumbo. Now you just made a statement. You said it's you said it's it's complicated when it when it comes to making gumbo. Would you describe that when it comes to how far you've gone come so far with your music career as an artist? Um yeah well it's definitely yeah it's definitely been some challenges. Um lots of challenges along the way. Um and uh but it but but I believe those challenges are necessary to um to to create the person that you're going to be ultimately you know and i think um uh, all those challenges i wouldn't change any of them because they they allowed me to be who i am and learn from my mistakes and learn from the challenges and learn from the pitfalls um and learn from the good times too um you know and, and it's made me uh the artist i am today now overall would you say that um, with you being, you also a pastor's, your pastor's son. I know you've heard that several times. That is a part of who you are. Um, being yeah. from a musical family, um, the artist, the musician, author, um, also Grammy Award winner and nominee for your latest project, uh, 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 Gumbo. 
and you're a father, mm -hmm. you're a husband. Would you say that's like a, a big bowl of gumbo? I, I would say so. That sounded like a lot of different <laughs> things that make up one thing. <laughs> that sounds like gumbo to me. But is it, my question is, is it hard to manage all of those different areas in your life? Um, yeah, it can be, it can, it can get hard sometimes. Um, you know, the challenge is trying to, um, trying to do the best that I can at all of them, you know, cause I like to, uh, I like to excel at whatever, whether that's being a husband or a father or excelling at music. Uh, I just try to be, uh, try to do them all at a high level. And so it, it becomes challenging. Uh, trying to give focus to one and then give focus to the other. So mm -hmm. um, I, I definitely think that that is um, not easy, um, but it's not impossible. You know? It's not impossible, and I, I totally agree. Now, you started um, with your career around 2000, well, with the putting out your different EPs and your projects around 2010 and two, or 2012. And from what I know, you were around maybe a little after 2012, you were signed to a major when you were with um, Little Wayne's. Uh, label did mm -hmm. that happen overnight or was it something you pursued or did they pursue you um they, they pursued me i mean i'm from new orleans like i said and um in 2010 i joined maroon 5 and we started to talk about uh, uh um me and mag main mag main is the president of young money mm -hmm. wayne's label and uh, we went to high school together so there was history there. Um, so it wasn't even like a pursuing. We just uh, met up one night and started talking about ideas. And, um, you know, that's what came of it. They wanted to do some different things. Um, you know, I wasn't a rapper. And uh, they wanted to try something different. And um, I wanted to try something different, too. So uh, we made that happen. Now, I know you also, you put out several EPs. Would you suggest that? Because I know, I, like I said, I have a lot of independent artists who check out the show. Would you suggest that as a, an option to do versus putting out full-length projects to put out EPs as an indie artist? Or just does it matter what type of artist you are? Um, I actually haven't put out a bunch of EPs. I put out a, 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 an EP before uh, that album with Young Money. Mm -hmm. I put out an EP called Follow My First Mind. And uh, I think that's the only EP I've done. I'm, I'm kind of a full length type of guy. Okay. But I will say that um, that there is something to, um, especially now. And, and when I was initially coming up in the industry, um, it wasn't as popular. But I think now because people's um, attention spans are so short, mm -hmm. and, um, and and they. You know, you need content as as often as possible. I do think that EPs or short projects are a, a good uh, formula to keep people engaged, and uh, but also not give them too much music where you overload them. So mm -hmm. if they can listen to five songs, they can actually fall in love with five songs. You know, because they're not intimidated to listen to that. It's like I could listen to five songs, twenty minutes, you yeah. know, fifteen minutes. Um, as opposed to going through a full-length project. But I think once you have sort of a fan base uh, and people know you, um, then you're able to, um, you know, you're able to be a little more, uh, you're able to do what you want to do a little bit more because you have people that are following you. Um, but I would say any, any people that are starting out, it's a good way to introduce and to continue to um, give yourself an excuse to introduce. You know? Mm-hmm. That's true. I like what you said about it gives them an opportunity uh, to give enough music where they can fall in love with who the artist is versus being overloaded at one time. And then it kind of makes them, you know, want more later on. Now, you mentioned about. Yeah, and this, mm -hmm. okay. Now, I was going to no, say. I was going to say, and, and I, I'm just a fan of short. I always have been. I'm a fan of short albums anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, my favorite albums in the world, they're not EPs, but they're nine songs purple rain is nine songs um thriller is nine songs mm -hmm. um it's stevie wonder's inner visions is nine songs so it doesn't take a whole lot to uh to make a statement so i've always been a fan of short albums even if they're not eps you know 
And for those who are listening online right now and checking it out on Facebook, I heard, hope you heard what he just said. It doesn't take a lot uh, to to make an impact. And, and that's true. Sometimes I think we overdo it at times. Maybe it could be in various ways because we're trying to prove something versus being authentically who you are as an artist. And I love how you express that on your latest project with claustrophobic. And you were talking about how you were, you know, they wanted you to become somebody else or or, you know, somebody that you weren't, was that difficult to write that song in the midst of either coming out of that situation or being in it? No, I was inspired to write this song. It, it was easy to write it because I was, I was feeling it. You mm-hmm. know? Uh, I, was, I was upset and I was disappointed. So uh, writing is the, is, is the way I express myself. So I was, I was really right to expect, uh, express myself at that point because it, it just had happened and I was feeling those things real heavy. So um, I wouldn't say that that was a hard song to write. I was, I was inspired. Now, were you coming out of a record company situation? Because I know, you know, years back you were signed yeah. to a major. Is that what pushed you yeah, to go I, the indie route? Well, no, I was indie before that. I started, I put out my first album in 2005. Mm-hmm. independently and I continued to do that to 2010 and then after 2010 is when I did the major deal with, with Young Money and Universal um, and I think it just um, you know I because I had been the indie route for so long I wanted to try something different and I think going into the major and feeling that and understanding that uh, made me feel more comfortable in the independent world uh, that I had been used to um, so it kind of, it didn't push me to the indie route, but it, it, um, it kind of pushed me back to the indie route. Okay. Um, I didn't want to be in the system. I wanted more control. Um, uh, like I said, I had fans, you know, it, it changes things when you have fans because then you have power. Um, you can always feed your, your fan base. Um, and I was able to do that independently. So, um, it pushed me back to that. I, when I wrote that song, I was just getting out of my major deal, and um, I was actually looking at other labels, and mm-hmm. I was, you know, having meetings, and eventually wrote claustrophobic and decided that I was going to do it independently again. Now, okay, now this question, you can, uh, hopefully, you can be as as transparent as possible. Would you say that mm-hmm. it's better because you you know definitely you've been an indie for so an indie for so long. And like you said, you're able to reach your fans the way that you want. But do you, is it more challenging because you kind of have to run it and lead it yourself versus having a machine connected to you? Yeah, well, I think it's, um, I think both both routes have their own challenges. Mm-hmm. Um, I think uh, a misconception about Envy is that you think, oh, I'm by myself and I can do what I want to do, but it requires a lot of work, um, and it requires you being the, you know, at one time I was the, with me and my manager, we were management, we were touring, mm-hmm. we were the booking agency, we were the the marketing, we, mm-hmm. you know, I was the record producer, so you wear a lot of hats, where in a major system you have a lot of people doing these things for you. Right. Um, so in that way I do think that it's much more challenging but I will say it's also much more rewarding because you're you're putting in everything you're risking everything so when that pays off it feels much better than when you had a whole building of people making this happen you right know? Um, so um, it, it definitely can be more challenging yeah now you you also at the early in the interview you mentioned um, if for those who are just tuning in and checking it out um, PJ is also connected to and a part of one of my favorite bands Maroon 5 I love Maroon 5 I've, I've loved them for years oh, thank uh, you. and Appreciate I it. love your work that you've done with them now now people that are listening to you PJ they may think and I don't necessarily as- wouldn't assume this but they may think oh well you know he's a pastor's son and he was uh, introduced to music early on he's been on certain platforms of course we know who your father is if they don't know Bishop Paul Morton Um, also Mm -hmm. he got connected with you know being in New Orleans you're around so many people and what I'm leading to is being uh, connected to and around certain platforms and then being on uh, connected to Maroon 5 later on in your career 
would you say that that was more of a, uh, a a push for you to be where you are now? Do you think that you needed those things to be where you are now? Or did it just kind of come um, along with who you already were growing up as a child up until the point you are now in life? I mean, I don't know if I need it, but I can definitely say that it it helped my career a lot. I mean, being being connected to something that is so successful and continue to become more successful after I join mm -hmm. um, can only could, could only help uh, me help relationships help uh, me learning you know help uh, yeah. all kinds of things so um, I don't know if I needed it to get where I, I tend to believe that um, you know I was going to end up where I am regardless you know mm -hmm. it's my purpose um, so I don't know if I needed that specifically, but um, it definitely helped me and uh, has, uh, has been one of the most amazing things that's happened to me in my career. Because you're on tour with them quite a lot. I mean, are you currently on tour with Maroon 5? No, I've actually, since Gumbo came out, I've been more on tour solo than with the band. We go on tour in September and October. Okay. Um, but I've, I've been touring for five months already this year, so um, solo on for the gumbo tour. Uh, but yeah, because I go back and forth between touring solo and touring with the band, um, I, I I tend to stay on the road a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now you mentioned you mentioned the word purpose, um, and I know that one of your favorite artists is Mr. Stevie Wonder. And you were you yeah. and you were uh, the, the you were able to perform the only one the song with him, and also you have um, worked with several other people who have influenced your musical career, but also you have a song on your latest project entitled Religion, and I mm -hmm. kind of you know want to know do you feel like that song is connected to your purpose just the things that you're saying in it and for those who haven't heard the song uh pj is talking about we we put god up, up front when it comes to certain decisions we make and we say because it was god we did this because it was god we did that and you speak about things that have gone on in our country and in our world so were yeah. you influenced by the purpose that you believe you have on the inside of you with that song? Or do you think that that's the voice that you are a voice to speak about certain things like that through your music, such as your favorite artist, Stevie Wonder has done? Yeah. I mean, I think both really, I, I, um, I think that was personally something I wanted to say mm -hmm. and that I was feeling, but also, uh, I think as artists, we're supposed to, uh, re reflect the times, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, I felt like I was speaking for uh, people who couldn't speak as loudly as I could. Um, you know, I wrote that during uh, the uh, presidential campaign, and I was—I felt like not only me, uh, a lot of people were feeling that way. And um, so, I mean, that—that's the way I write songs. I mean, I know, uh, you know, people write songs for different reasons, but I write them to express myself. I think all my songs are connected to my purpose, you know, no mm -hmm. different religion and claustrophobic and sticking to my guns. And, you know, all these songs are songs that are connected to me and what I feel and what I want to say. Um, so, yeah, I definitely think it, uh, it, it was connected to my purpose. And um, I was speaking for myself on that one as well as um, for, for, for the people, being a voice for the people. Well, it's definitely loud and clear through the song, what you're saying. Um, and I even think it, it speaks to when for those who are in uh, gospel music or um, not even just gospel music, but when those who, who love God and know God and will make decisions and say, oh, God told me to do that. When a lot of times right. it may not be God. Would you agree? Oh yeah, I think a lot of times it's just you, <laughs> mm -hmm. and, uh, and and you use that as an excuse. Um, so yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Now, PJ, yeah, early in, I'm sure early on when you started out, uh, maybe coming up younger in your household, and you were singing and you know performing and playing and different things like that as a musician, and you made the decision not to go the gospel route. Um, and you express that to your family. Um, 
I'm sure you had a few challenges as far as exactly how you wanted to explain that. And I know I have people who are listening who may be in that same situation, who've grown up in a church, you know, and they they play maybe they they play for churches or sing in church, but they don't necessarily want to perform or um, sing gospel music. What are maybe I don't know. I don't want you, if you don't want to go really deep into it, it's fine. But what would be maybe a bit of advice you could give to them when it comes to expressing that desire of the genre of music or the type of music you want to sing that you feel is a part of who 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 they feel they they are and they need to express that. Yeah, well, for me, it was um, you know I grew up in church my whole life, and um, but I just knew that as an artist, I wanted to say more. Because um, these specifically, I think it's all like we talked about purpose. Mm -hmm. um, but I felt like it was my purpose to talk about more than just God, you know. And that's usually what gospel music is limited to. Um, and I felt like uh, even you know I got a song religion. I think mm -hmm. if I want to talk about God, I can. Yeah. Uh, if I want to talk about other things, being a gospel musician, it, it limits me sometimes. But um, I think for me, and I couldn't articulate this. It, this well initially as a kid um, but I think my parents felt my heart and felt like um, it wasn't just me trying to rebel and want to do something else but that I really had a gift and I really had a purpose to do more than that um, but my, my thing was always that you know we, we we find people I talk about love a lot I talk about relationships a lot mm -hmm. um, but to get married you, you, you gotta date somebody and um, you know you can tell your friend uh, you know, I like this girl. Um, she looks good, whatever. Um, and that's fine to talk about that and be honest about that. But then when you write a song about it, then all of a sudden it becomes this secular song that's that's wrong. Hmm. So I think that that music just reflects life. Uh, you know, if I write a song about the sky being blue, or if I if I write a song about, um, you know barbecuing at my house then that's a secular song yeah but it's just reflecting life so um i don't know where at what point in our history um that became a bad thing just to express life um uh but i i think that 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 was my purpose to be able to speak to um just everyday things that we go through and you've been very uh, extremely successful at coming from becoming expressing yourself who you wanted to be, you know, early on in life and then becoming an independent artist, um, signing with a major, still be uh, maintaining your authenticity. And you're still an independent artist, Grammy nominated independent artist for your current project. And I'm saying all these things, the accolades that are connected to you. But that's a big deal, PJ, because it, it's sometimes we don't think we can do it as indie artists um, or we feel like we have to be connected to labels, which I, I agree with you. I don't think either is bad or one is better than the other. I think it just depends on your yeah. vision and what, who you have connected right. to you. Um, but I'm, I'm just in awe of just how, how well you've done um, and just and still well, maintaining you. your authenticity as far as how you sound, what you sing about, what you just said about it. When did it become bad and not straying away from that? But have you, um, when it came to building teams over the time, the course of time as an independent artist, was that challenging, maintaining a core team? Yeah, well, it has been challenging. I, it's probably why my core team has been kept very small. Mm -hmm. uh, my manager now, uh, with my day-to-day, -day, Tanya, has been with me for, I don't know, 15-plus years. Wow. And um, But she started out as my merch person, mm -hmm. then became my assistant, and then eventually became management and day-to-day. -day. Um, and I think that was just... You know, I, I find comfort when I find somebody who works well with me, then I try to stick to them. But I think the other way I've been able to get a solid team is I didn't go and get out and get people um, before I needed them. So I didn't hmm. I didn't go and get a marketing team before I needed marketing. You know, yeah. I, I try to do as much as I can until I can't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. And then it's time to bring somebody on. But I think we should all as artists try to do as much as we can uh, one to learn the business and to learn every aspect of the business 
but also to make sure that you're not just picking a team. I know people who say, I need this agent, I need this manager, I need this PR person, and they don't even have anything to put out or yeah. to promote or to, you know what I'm saying? So I think it's all in timing, and I, I was always, um, I, I would always go by that rule of, um, I'll, I'll bring somebody on when I just can't do it anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, so there, there have been challenges along the way, uh, but I've, I've been blessed to be able to like, uh, you know, have a solid team that's been around me for a while. And that's from my band to my management to my attorney. Mm-hmm. Um, and we just built and grown together. You know, I think a, a, a big, another big mistake people make is try to go get the most successful manager Hmm. Or go get the, the the most popular manager uh, when they may not not be the right fit for you. You may see them successful for somebody else, mm-hmm. uh, but they may have built years and years with them and uh, know them in a different way. Um, yeah. Sometimes they won't be able to have that same impact with you. You are speaking wisdom. I mean, everything you're saying. You speak in my language. I love everything you're saying uh, from the part about if you don't have anything to promote or push, just wait. And we say, until you can't do it anymore, would you agree that it can also be very costly when we step ahead like that? Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. That's what I'm saying. You're spending money that, that you don't have and, and that you don't need to be spending yet. You know, you want to wait till you, you have something to put out and that you're proud of and that you've gone back and forth with. And then it's time to start adding people, but definitely can be costly. Very costly. I like to quote this one verse, Luke 14 and 28, where it says, count the cost. Like, who would build a building first before they see if they have enough money, you know, to build it? Well, PJ, I have enjoyed this interview with you. But also my last question for you is you had the Project Gumbo out. What made you uh, want to do the unplugged version of Gumbo? Um, well, it really just was based on, we, once I put Gumbo out, we went on tour for the whole year and um, then got the Grammy nominations. And um, the, the, the shows were so electric and the energy was so crazy that I just felt like I, wanted, I, I needed to capture this and show people, show the world how people are reacting to these songs live. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's really where the idea came from. So um, we went through. You know, the Grammys were in New York this year, so Grammy weekend, I brought everybody down to New York, and we just um, we just captured it all there and really, like, just bottled up all this good energy that, that we have been seeing all year on tour. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I'm just very happy with the way it came out. Because I know you have uh, Lecrae is on the Unplugged version. Um, and your new single with uh, BJ and the Chicago Kid and the Hamiltons. Now, how did you get BJ and the Hamiltons all in one room together? Well, the good thing, I think one of the other reasons I picked Grammy weekend is because I knew all the artists would be in town. Mm-hmm. Uh, everybody was in town for the Grammy. The Hamiltons were nominated. BJ and I have been friends for over 10, 10 years, so we got each other's back, you know, regardless. So BJ was there. The Cray was in town for the Grammys. Um, my, my boy Keon, who played, was lived in New York, so he was there. And um, and Yabba, Yabba actually lived in New York as well. Um, so I was able to get everybody in there. We had a, a lot of artists that you didn't see on the film and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And there was a bunch of artists who were there watching it as well uh, because it was Grammy weekend. It, so- was good, it was a good vibe. So they were probably the ones we hear in the background responding to, uh, like your statements on the one song, go through, go through your phone when you was, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, there was some of them, but that was the audience that I invited. But a lot of the artists were in the rooms, in the studios, listening to it and watched it on, on the TVs that we had in there. So it was, it was a cool night, man. And you also had one of Chicago's finest, Matt Jones. Um, that's fa- right. He That's is right. phenomenal. He is phenomenal. Well, I'm highly yeah, he's amazing at what he does. He true. He truly is. Well, I'm highly inspired by your career, PJ, and um, just just like I said, in all of all the things that you've done. Obviously, I know you've been uh, led by God as well, and just maintaining your career and your family. Um, you have children. You have a wife, and I know that that's because you're always on the road. 
is that now we do have people who want to be in this music industry. Um, I know I said I had my last question, but this is probably the last one uh, who they don't under may, they may not understand how hectic it can be being on the road all the time. Is that now is that something that you would you would suggest for people to really step back and ask themselves, is this what they really want to do when it comes to touring? Well, I think music, period, you really got to, I mean, you got to really love this and really want Uh-oh, it. Uh-oh, I think, I think we might have, hello? Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, that's better, thanks. Hey. Okay, yeah, I think like I, like I was saying earlier, um, you know, the challenge is being able to try to balance all of these things in life, and um, you really have to, uh, it's a big sacrifice, um, so you, you got to choose if this is what you really want to do, because you're gonna miss out on some birthdays. You're gonna mm-hmm. miss out on some weddings, some funerals, mm-hmm. and everything else because you're out there doing doing what you do. So you got to make sure that you're willing to uh, willing to risk it and willing to to invest all that time in what you love. Right. That's so true. So you all who are listening, you watching it live on Facebook, I hope you're hearing what PJ Morton is saying because he does this full time. Um, this is a full time thing for him. Well, PJ, can you let everybody know uh, what you have going on currently? Are you headed? We, you told us earlier that you're currently scoring for a TV show. We'll wait to hear what show that is. But where are you headed next with the Gumbo Tour? The Gummo Tour, we're um, actually next. Well, we got Martha's Vineyard uh, th- this weekend and Philly this weekend. But um, our next tour tour is going to, we go to uh, Asia, we're going to wow. Japan and Korea. And, and then we then we head to Europe. Uh, we're going to be in Spain and Ireland and uh, in London, Paris, Amsterdam. Wow. Um, yeah, so... so uh, we we take we're taking the gumbo tour overseas with a more gumbo tour because we took gumbo tour um, over to London uh, Europe last year, mm-hmm. um, but uh, but now we're gonna gonna also add Asia and uh, it's exciting man we're, we're taking it all over the world we just got back from Australia a couple uh, a couple weeks ago and uh, we're just keeping it moving. And you you definitely are doing that. I just want to congratulate you again for your Grammy nominations for your project and um, all the things that you're doing. Thank you, thank you. I don't think I'll be able to hang out with you all overseas, but I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure that you have <laughs> many many supporters and fans over that way that are waiting to experience PJ Morton live um, with and also when you go back out with Maroon Five, one of my favorite bands. Well, PJ, can you just let everybody know yeah, yeah. How, how they can connect with you on social media and also your website? Uh, yeah, my, my social media is at PJ Morton, at PJ, M-O-R-T-O-N, and the website is pjmortonmusic.com. So check me out. Check me out. And also uh, the gumbostore.com is where all the, all the merchandise is, all the T-shirts and CDs and uh, albums and everything is all there so uh check your boy out please everybody follow him today follow his career his music and purchase his p- music all of his projects especially the latest one gumbo and gumbo unplugged well thank you pj for hanging out on the artist stage radio show you have given us so much great wisdom and tips and hopefully you guys can check out all the comments. We tried to put all your comments, PJ, in the comment section on, on the Facebook Live page. Um, and those who are also listen, oh, awesome. listening online. So you probably see us tagging you a little bit tonight um, as people are commenting. Oh, good. Well, thank you, PJ. And I hope good. you have a, a wonderful week and a blessed tour. Um, and, and blessings to your family and your career. And have a great day. All right. Thank you so much. Thank all you. Right. Bye-bye. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for tuning in and checking out the live interview with PJ Morton right here on the artist stage. He said a lot of good stuff. I was trying to, like, absorb all of it. Y'all know I love good talking when it comes to uh, the music industry. But I hope what you took away from it was just the the um, importance of thinking ahead. Think ahead as far as what you're trying to pursue before you just jump out there and you get all these team members. And, you know, and we if you've, you've done it, that doesn't mean you're bad or you've done wrong just start again and say let me let me figure this out and make it work this time around nothing's going to be perfect 
Just keep loving on yourself so that when you're thinking about things, you're thinking about what's, what can affect you, what doesn't affect you, um, and how things will later on affect you later down the line in your music career. PJ gave us a lot of great information.